Hi, I am Sony and today we are going to discuss an OLAP, Online Analytical Processing. Often when we seek to implement a business intelligence deployment, we have faced with the question to OLAP or not to OLAP. If you don't know what OLAP is, you have come to the right place. Not only we are going to explain what OLAP is, we are also going to discuss where it might be appropriate and where you might want to avoid it. To explain what OLAP is, it's probably the best to consider its history. You see, in the mid to late 90s, businesses found it very difficult to query data out of the recently acquired foundational databases transaction systems. Not only queries are very slow, but they simply weren't flexible enough to navigate the data. And remember, even the best processors at that time would be blown away by your average laptop today. Various vendors in the marketplace introduced proprietary solutions to address this, which ushered in the rise of OLAP. One of the critical goals that the OLAP vendors tried to achieve is to minimize the amount of on-the-fly processing needed while the user was navigating the data. This was achieved by pre-processing and storing every possible combination of dimensions, measures, and hierarchies before the user started his or her analysis. This allowed the data to appear instantaneously when the user investigated the information. While the market has matured greatly and the standards have emerged, the data optimization methods of OLAP are fundamentally still the same. Overall database activity can be divided into two broad classes. One of them, the traditional one, is known as OLTP or Online Transaction Processing. The other one, the subject of this video, is OLAP. OLTP is typically characterized by short transactions, both queries and updates. Things like updating the account balance in a database or logging a page view in a web application. In OLTP, databases are generally fairly simple. To find an account balance or to find a GP of a student, they typically touch small portions of the data and updates in the environment can be frequent. You might be making airline seat reservations or updating an online shopping cart. OLAP is a pretty much opposite in all respects. In OLAP, we have long transactions, often complex analysis of the data or data mining type operations. The queries I said can be complex and especially they often touch the large portions of data. Updates in OLAP environment tend to be infrequent. In fact, sometimes it is not there. Given below are some examples of OLAP. Amazon analyzes purchases by its customers to come up with an individual screen with the products of likely interest to the customer. This requires complex analysis of the data by their customers. We also have analysts at Walmart look for items with increasing sales in some regions with the help of OLAP. Multidimensional data model is an integral part of online analytical processing or OLAP. Because OLAP is online, it must provide answers quickly. Analysts pose iterative queries during interactive sessions, not in bad jobs that run overnight. And because OLAP is also analytic, the queries are complex. The multidimensional data model is designed to solve complex queries in real time. This model is important because it enforces simplicity. As Ralph Kimball states in his landmark book, The Data Warehouse Toolkit, that the central attraction of the dimensional model of a business is its simplicity. That simplicity is a fundamental key that allows users to understand databases and allows software to navigate databases efficiently. It is component of logical groups, measures, dimensions, hierarchies, levels, and attributes. The simplicity of the model is inherent because it defines objects that represent real-world business entities. Analysts know which business measures they are interested in, which dimensions and attributes make the data meaningful, and how the dimensions of their business are organized into levels and hierarchies. OLAP is further classified into three main categories, multidimensional OLAP, relational OLAP, and hybrid OLAP, which is a combination of MOLAP and ROLAP. Multidimensional OLAP, also known as MOLAP. MOLAP product enables end users to model data in a multidimensional environment rather than providing a multidimensional view of relational data, as ROLAP products do. The structure of a multidimensional model 
is not a series of tables but what is generally referred to as a cube. Cubes modeled in a multidimensional database extend the concept associated with spreadsheets. Just as a cell in a spreadsheet represents the intersection of two dimensions, a cell in a cube represents the intersection of infinite number of dimensions. In short, multidimensional database allows users to add extra dimensions rather than additional tables as in a relational model. And the MOLAP cube structure allows a particularly fast, flexible data modeling and calculations. For one, locating cells is vastly simplified. An application can identify a cell location by none rather than by searching an index or the entire model as in a relational database. Further, multidimensional models incorporate advanced array processing techniques and algorithms for managing data and calculations. As a result, multidimensional databases can store data very efficiently and process calculations in a fraction of the time required of relational based products. Disadvantages of MOLAP are limited in the amount of data it can handle because all calculations are performed when the cube is built. It is not possible to include a large amount of data in the cube itself. This is not to say that the data in the cube cannot be derived from a large amount of data. Requires additional investment. Cube technology are, are often proprietary and do not already exist in the organization. Therefore, to adopt MOLAB technology, chances are additional investment in human and capital resources are needed. As you can see, we have the MOLAP architecture on the screen. The transaction between the database server and the front-end requirements is done by the MOLAP server to give out analytical requirements as an output. Hi, this is Pallavi and I will be further explaining the OLAP technology. A MOLAP cube is a term that typically refers to a multidimensional array of data. For example, a company might wish to summarize financial data by product, by time period, and by city to compare actual and budget expenses. So, product, time, city, and scenario of the actual and the budget data are the data's dimensions. Each cell of the cube holds a number that represents some measure of the business, such as sales, profits, expenses, budget, and forecast. Conceiving data as a cube with hierarchical dimensions lead to conceptually straightforward operations to facilitate analysis. Aligning the data content with a familiar visualization enhances analysts' learning and productivity. The user-initiated process of navigation by calling for page displays interactively through the spe specification of slices via rotations and drill down or up is sometimes called slice and dice. Common operations include slice and dice, drill down, roll up and pivot. Slice is the art of picking a rectangular subset of a cube by choosing a single value for one of its dimensions, creating a new cube with one fewer dimension. Dice is the operation which produces a subcube by allowing the analyst to pick specific values of multiple dimensions. Drill down or up allows the user to navigate among levels of data ranging from the most summarized which is up to the most detailed which is down. Roll up involves summarizing the data along a dimension. Summarization rules might be computing totals along a hierarchy or applying a set of formulas. Now I'll be explaining about ROLAP. Relational Online Analytical Processing or ROLAP is another form of OLAP which performs dynamic multidimensional analysis of data stored in a relational database rather than in a multidimensional database. ROLAP is the fastest growing style of OLAP. Its products have been engineered to support products directly to metadata. It enables multidimensional views of 2D relational tables. It also has a special schema called the STAR schema.
One relation is the fact table, all others are the dimension tables. As we can see, there are, some, uh, there are pros and cons of the roll-up. The pros include flexibility, while the cons include data, des database design. Some of the examples of roll-up technology would be Axis and Beacon. The star schema. In a three-tiered architecture, the user submits a request for the multidimensional analysis and the roll-up engine converts the requested SQL for submission to the database. The star schema shown here separates business process data into facts which holds the measurable quantitative data about a business and dimensions which are descriptive attributes related to the fact data. A star schema with many dimensions is sometimes called a centipede schema. There are several benefits of the star schema. The star schemas are denormalized, so we have simple queries, simplified business reporting logic, query performance gains, fast aggregations. But the main disadvantage of the star schema is that data integrity is not enforced as well as it is in a highly normalized database. This slide shows us the ROLAP architecture, which provide a multidimensional view of the data to the user, but it stores the data in the relational database format. This architecture goes on with the logic that relational storage of data can give much higher level of scalability and can absorb as many dimensions as needed. This can also provide faster response time due to indexing and other features. Now that we have discussed two most integral types of OLAP technologies, I would move on to HOLAP or Hybrid Online Analytical Processing. It is a combination of multidimensional OLAP and relational OLAP. HOLAP was developed to combine the greater data capacity of ROLAP with superior processing capability of MOLAP. Typically, it stores data in both relational and multidimensional database and uses whichever is best suited to the type of processing desired. Like for heavy data processing, the data is efficiently stored in RDB while for speculative processing, data is more efficiently stored in MDDB. Therefore, the advantages of HOLAP will include simple installation, administration is easier, and network traffic would be less. But the cons would obviously include redundancy and inconsistency. Shown below is the HOLAP architecture which is following the same idea like the ROLAP approach, use the star schema, and here as well aggregation tables are built. But this time the aggregation tables cannot only be standard relational tables, but also OLAP cubes. Some of the areas where OLAP databases are used has been shown here. It is used by Microsoft as a standard API for exchanging metadata and data between OLAP server and a client on the Windows platform. It is also used as a marketing and sales analysis and fi in financial services industry. The main limitation of OLAP databases is always the number of cells and not the number of dimensions. Hence, as the dimensions increase, the number of cells increase exponentially. Also, in practice, most of the time, the OLAP servers reach their limit in cell numbers before they hit their dimensions limit. Therefore, as a conclusion, OLAP technology is fast, provides flexible data summarization and analysis. The OLAP servers are a superior technology for business intelligence applications. The OLAP servers and relational databases can work together to create an environment that delivers data quickly to perform the analysis needed to make the best business decisions. This brings us to the end of the presentation on OLAP. 
Thank you very much for listening to both of us.